Our body is always in relationship with the external environment. And our body or our nervous system is trying to keep us alive, certainly, but also try to keep us in balance and keep us kind of going towards what we deem important. If you have established a line in the sand, a pole in the ground, a why, so to speak, that's wonderful. And that's a huge part of the process. So if you have done that, you now would want to understand, okay, who am I? What is going on with me? And how might I gain some insight about that so that I can really start changing my life? A framework for understanding ourselves. It's very simple and straightforward. Self-awareness. How do we develop that self-awareness? There's many different ways. There's many, again, different approaches. I think a very clear, straightforward doorway into developing self-awareness starts with just understanding simply how does the human mind nervous system work at a very basic level. There's all kinds of journaling practices and tools out there. There's all kinds of things that you can use to help with this. But simply just writing down what is happening in this moment? Where am I? What's going on? Then we can start breaking it down into sort of the internal landscape. And if we come from a human well-being perspective, this can be broken down into thoughts, emotions or feelings, sensory experience. So what's actually, what does it feel like inside my body? Behavior and then perception or awareness. So I have thoughts, feelings and emotions, body sensations, behaviors, and my ability to perceive those things happening or to be aware that these things are happening while they are happening. We want to start with just this understanding of our body is always in relationship with the external environment. And our body or our nervous system is trying to keep us alive, certainly, but also try to keep us in balance and keep us kind of going towards what we deem important. To understand what influences that, right? Because if we're in a place of suffering or where we don't want to be, clearly our nervous system is not guiding us in the direction that is good for us. So for me, a big trigger, forgetfulness, disorganization. On the other side of our moment to moment experiences, in one context, it's called a modifier or just life circumstance. So if I'm having relationship issues or job stress or an illness in the family or social strife, that's also going to influence how I interpret my moment to moment experience. So those things being said are all part of it, part of it. Okay. Let's go back to my example of forgetfulness. When that happens, there's an internal reaction. Okay, and that internal reaction is a mix of my feelings or emotions, my thoughts, my body sensations, my impulses, my perception or my awareness of all these things happening, and then behavior. And these things all kind of mush together and happen so fast that we have no real chance to kind of stop it. What we're trying to learn is to notice, to become aware of, to perceive these things happening as they happen. So we'll go back to this thing of forgetfulness for me. So that's the trigger. A modifier might be recovering drug addict, might be all the other things happening in my life in that moment. The forgetfulness piece happens. So instantly for me, I get tense. I get contracted. It's another simplistic way to understand body sensations. We're either contracted or we're open. Contraction, openness. So I get something, I get aware, I become aware that I forgot something. Instant contraction. I get tense. I usually get frustrated and angry and fucking irate really quickly. So those things happening. Then my thoughts kick into high gear. I'm such an idiot. 
I'm such a failure. Why am I so stupid? What's wrong with me? I'm never going to learn how to do this properly. And if it's in relationship to I forgot to meet someone, call someone, or I missed a meeting or something, then my mind goes into the projections of this person's going to think I'm an idiot. This person's never going to want to talk to me again. I'm such a failure. And this whole narrative starts to play out in our thoughtscape. Now, everyone has a different narrative or thought pattern to their experience. And part of this self awareness is just to understand what is my story? What is the theme of my stress response? But what we want to do is to get into the habit of taking the actions. So we develop the self awareness. With that awareness, we start taking actions. And that, in my opinion, is best done through a self compassion practice. Another word for self compassion is inner strength. Whatever words you want to use doesn't matter. And that's what I'm going to talk about next. <laughs> I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content and otherwise have a great day. Peace out.